let's finally write our first test. And we're going to be writing a very simple unit test that's going to test the functionality of one component in isolation. And we're going to test this and explore all of the different methods that we can utilize to query for a specific element. Now, the component that we are going to be testing is a very simple one for our first test. And it is this component right here. This is actually a, a header component and the text that is being rendered is being passed as a prop by the parent component. So over here to do is the prop. But if I go to followers, then followers will be the prop. So what we are going to do is we're going to see, hey, this component, if we pass it a specific prop, does it render that text appropriately and correctly? So we're going to be testing the functionality of this component. All right, so let's actually go in here and let's find that component. So that component is inside of the component directory in the source directory, and it is the header. So if we take a look at the header, very, very simple. All it is is an H1 that is displaying the text that was passed in as a prop. That it, that's all it is doing. And actually, if I go to to do, that renders that component, then you can see header and it passes to do as a title prop. Very, very simple. And so this is what we will be testing. And we're going to be looking at all of the different methods that we can utilize to get this specific element. Okay, so let's begin with it. Now we want to create a test file for this uh, component. Now the typical convention is to go to the directory where your component lives and create a underscore, underscore, test, underscore, underscore folder. And in here, you're going to create the header.test.js file. So test.js file. And that is going to be your test. You can see that React Testing Library is using that. Now it is going to fail ultimately because we don't have any tests. So let's, let's actually go ahead and let's copy all of this and let's delete this uh, a test because, uh, because it's, it's, it's always going to fail, which is going to be pretty annoying. And let's just paste this in here and let's just change a bit of things. So for instance, here we want to use the header component. So the header component, that lives up a directory header.js. And over here, we want to use header. And here, we're going to be looking for the h1 element. So you can say heading element. So heading element instead of link element. And now what we can do is let's get it by text. Let's actually just utilize get by text. So the header is actually going to be taking in a prop. So we can say title, and then we can say that the title is equal to, let's say, um, to-dos. Or you know what? My header, so my header, so whatever my header is. So I am going to expect that I can get a heading element by, uh, by, by getting it by text, where the text is my header. And this is a regular expression. So we can leave everything uh, lowercase if we want to. And so if I were to go ahead and save this, you can see that it has passed. And so you can see that we actually got our header element or our heading element. And that was in the document. Now, if I did something like um, by cats or cars, or I guess cats, let's do cats then it is going to fail. If I passed in cats as the prop, then, or cats in the, as the props, then it is going to pass. And so we see here that our component is working exactly the way that we want it to. So let's actually go ahead and let's just change this to my header. And over here, my header. And let's basically change our, uh, our title in the block, on the test block. So. We're going to change it to should render same text passed into title prop. 
So that is going to describe our test. And I'm also going to change this to it instead of test because I like using it blocks rather than test blocks. Okay, so that is one way that we can test for our component. And this is a completely valid unit test that is testing this particular unit right here. All right, so now let's start talking about some of the different methods that we can utilize. So let's actually copy this test block. And remember, we can have multiple tests inside of our application. If I actually save this, then we see here two tests pa passed and all of them are associated with the tests in this file. So now what we want to do is we want to start using some of the different uh, uh, methods that we can use to get a specific element. So let's say here, let's get the element by something else and let's get it by its role. So get by role and the role of this element. So the role of this element is, well, to be a heading. So we are going to get by role and then you can see all of the different roles that we can utilize, form, uh, um, whatever it is that you want. You can always read the documentation to figure out which one it is. You can see here paragraph, um, that's probably gonna be related to a P tag, search box, whatever, but we are going to be using heading. And so if I were to save this, then it is going to pass. Now remember, if I pick something else that doesn't exist, like paragraph, let's say, paragraph does exist as a viable role, but there is no element that follows that role, paragraph. So you can see here that it fails. Remember, when we use get by, the thing fails if it can't find a match. So over here, we're going to say heading. So heading. All right, so now let's move on to the next one. And in this one, we're going to explore get by role a little bit more. So let's say that we have, let's actually go to our header. Actually, we already have that open. And let's say that we have two headers in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to uh, display two headers. So let's, 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 let's put in a fragment. And over here, I'm gonna put in one header. And then over here, I'm gonna put in an H3. And this H3, let's also give it a class name of header. And uh, let's go ahead and let's just say cats, for instance. So this is just, it holds the uh, text cats. So this is all, this is going to cause one of our tests to fail. And I want you to take a guess as to which test failed here. So uh, remember this one, we didn't save it. So this one doesn't exist yet. So which one failed? Well, the one that failed is this one. And the reason why is because there are two elements, there are two elements that match this condition. And so this is not what we want. We always want to find an element that we want to use the condition that finds one element. So what we can do with get by role is specify the text that we want to get. So we want to get by the heading, but we also want the text of my header over uh, cats. So we can do that by specifying an object and then saying the name. The name is basically the text. And then we can say in here, my header. So let me just quickly comment this out because this one will always fail. And now if I refresh this, so we are getting by the heading and then we're getting by the text. This is a very good approach, get by role, because it really mimics what the user is going to do. They're going to look for the heading and they're going to look for the specific text. But now let's start exploring some of the other ones. So let's start talking about some of the semantic ones. So let's go here and let's say, let's say get by title. So get by title. And the title, let's say that the title is header. Now, if you don't know, in HTML, we can also specify a title attribute. And we can say that, hey, this is a header. Now, ultimately, the user is going to have no idea that this title exists in this HTML element. But we can also query by it if we need to. So let's go ahead and let's just quickly save this. And you can see we have three passing tests. 
All right, so now let us move on to testing by ID. So remember over here, last priority is we can also test by specific ID. Again, we ultimately don't want to do this, but if we have to, we can. So to do that, what we can do is go to our header and give it a very specific data test ID. And we can call this data test ID whatever we want. This is going to be a string. So let's just call this header two, for instance, or header one, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And now what we can do here is let's go ahead and just copy this test. And so we can get by test ID, and then we're going to say header one. So now if we were to save this, ta-da, our tests pass. All right, cool. So that is pretty much all we need to know with get by. Let's start exploring some of the other ones like find by. So let's go ahead over here. Let's write a comment. So this is going to be find by. And now let's just see uh, how find by works. We're not going to explore all, all of the other different attributes because they work exactly the same way. We're just going to look at find by. So we want to find by text. So let's actually copy, um, let's copy, which one is it? This one, this, this, this one's perfect. So let's go here. And instead of get by, let's just say find by. So find by. Now this is going to fail. And the reason why this is going to fail is this expects to be asynchronous. So what we have to do here is say async and then await. So we can say async await. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and save this and then this works. So if, again, if we need anything to be asynchronous, we are going to be using find by over get by. Now the last thing is, let's start talking about query by. So let's go ahead over here and then let's do query by. So query by. All right, so let's copy this exact same one. And let's say that this is not asynchronous, so we don't have to async await it. We can always specify the async function and not await this, and that's what we'll do actually, because that's what I did for the other ones. And over here, let's just do get by real quick. So let's just do get by, and then over here it says my header. So of course this is going to pass. Everything is fine. But let's say I change this to get by text, and then over here I specify dogs. Well, there is no, there is no uh, element inside of our web page that has dog as text. And so when we use get by, that is going to fail. So that is going to fail. Now, if we don't want that to fail, if we want to basically test that, hey, there is an element in, inside of our, uh, or, or there, there isn't an element inside of our, um, inside of our application with the dog text, what we would do instead is we would do query by. So we would do query by, so we would do query by text. And then what we can do is assert something else. We can assert something like expect heading element, and then to say something like dot not to be in document. So this specifies the opposite condition. And we're gonna talk about assertions in great, great detail, but this is basically saying, hey, I don't expect this to be in the document. So if I were to save this, then this is going to pass. But again, if I change this to get, then it is going to fail because, because it's going to fail in this line right here and not hit the assertion. So here we would say query by. Now the last thing is, let's just explore one of the get all by. And specifically, let's just look at get all by. So let's go over here. I'm just gonna quickly copy this and Let's go ahead and let's do get all by role. So get all by role. And we want to get all of the elements with the role of heading. Of heading. So here 
we should expect to get these two elements inside of an array. So over here, we can change this to heading elements. And then over here, what we can do is we can get the length of it. And then what we can do is we can assert that the length of this array is going to be to be two. So let's actually change this to an S. And now what we can do is just save this and this should work fine. All right, so that pretty much sums it up. And that is all of the different methods that we can utilize. I hope that makes sense and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.